All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting the table prepped so that we can start to prime it and fill in any holes. Basically what we want to do is to start with as smooth a surface as possible. Especially depending on the vinyl that we're installing, any small imperfection in the table can sometimes be seen through. So the smoother, the smoother the surface, the easier it is to get a nice clean install. Basically we're just starting with palm sander, about 120 grit, um, or even just a piece of sandpaper, and this one here is 80 grit, it's a little rougher, but it just helps to get some of these impurities off. As soon as we're finished sanding and ready, then we can start to prime and install. All right, what I'm doing here is that the table actually had some burn marks. And we sand the table down just to get them nice and smooth, but there are still some impurities, a little bit of bumps and that, and those can show through into the vinyl. So what we're using is actually just some wood filler, just some standard wood filler, and I'm just smoothly applying it. This sets really quickly, so in about 15 minutes, we'll be able to sand again and get a nice, perfect surface that'll be ready for prime and install. Here is I'm applying a water-based primer. It's basically 50% water, 50% primer. And what we want to do is to evenly prime the entire surface. And as we're doing this, we want to ensure that we have as few bubbles and as few large spots of primer as possible. Because as this dries, it may dry with a bit of an impurity, which will be seen through the vinyl. The primer is basically going to ensure that the vinyl never comes off unless we choose to have it removed. Talking about my snitty in another video, and this snitty allows me to cut just the paper backing, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this one here. I've got a piece of vinyl here, which I'm going to use to cover just the leg of the table. But in order to prep it, what I want to do is essentially just cut off a couple inches off the top, come across, peel this back, now I'm prepped and ready for the install. Giving myself a little bit of extra room, a few inches on either side, all the way around. And I've prepped my piece by cutting off some of my paper backing. I've lined it up. And now I'm just going to start to apply everything, get it all lined up and in place. And I've got my gold medium squeegee with a belt pad on it. And what I'm going to do is just tack this and essentially lock it in place. So I've got this now locked in place. What I can do is start to roll this back. The additional material and because that's locked in I know it's not moving I can then start to pull the paper back just slightly off just enough to flip this over and leave the material still up and now I can start to overlap with a lot of pressure on my squeegee strokes and once I've got that started, I can start to pull the paper backing out from underneath. So, I'm going to show you guys how to wrap a corner on this table. I've already done one corner, but I'll walk you through this one. This, this table is a little bit different because there's a slight bevel on the edge of the table. And as you can see over on this side, not only do we have the bevel, but we've got a 45 degree corner. So this I'm going to do in a two step process. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by heating the material up and then just bending it down this 45 degree bevel. And then I'll follow that up with what we call a double cut. And as you can see, I'm just heating the material a little bit. 
We don't want to overheat it here, but we want to have enough that what we can do is stretch the material down slightly in place, just ever so slightly. And now you can see that we can see that 45 degree bevel and we haven't stretched it and we haven't overstretched it and overheated it because we still want to maintain that wood grain in this material. I'm just going to use my thumb and I'm going to secure this in place. So I'm using quite a bit of pressure here so that we've essentially locked it down and it's really not going to go anywhere. Now what I'm going to do is pull this slightly back up and basically I'm going to reheat it to return it back to its original shape. This is going to allow us to get nice even cuts without overstretching the material. So I'm just bringing this back up to the bottom of that bevel and you can see it's starting to return back as it cools down. I'm just going to heat it back up a little bit more. I'm going to give it a little bit of time. And you can see it is still a little bit pliable, but it's starting to cool back down. Once it's cooled down enough, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just heating, not heating, but just by pulling and getting this first corner done. So I'm going to lock this in place and you can see now I've got this first corner down and in place. And again, I'm just going to give this a little touch of heat to get that wrinkle out. Let that cool back down. I'm going to do the same on this side. Get that wrinkle out. Let it cool back down. And again, we just want to make sure that this is locked in place. I just put a fresh blade in, but normally at the beginning of any cut like this, I'm going to start with a nice, fresh, cracked off blade. All I'm going to do is start from the corner, and I'm actually just going to freehand this down the side, and this is going to be the first cut of my double cut. I'm going to bring that down. Now again, I'm just going to give this a little touch of heat get rid of that wrinkle, bring it back to its normal shape. And as you can see here, we haven't stretched the material at all. And so now I'm going to bring this down, just with my thumb, I'm going to lock this in place. And you can see here actually. Can you put it a little gonna... close right now? Yep. Ready. Okay, so I'm going to lock this down into place. And again, you can see that I haven't done really any stretching of the material. So I'm going to start from right on the side from where my cut was and I'm basically going to overlap my first cut. I'm going to bring that down and again cut right through. Peel this material up. So we're getting ready to cut this edge. We're going to do another double cut. I'm just going to heat this back up, get it back to its original form. We don't want any stretching on this. Let that cool down. Essentially, I'm just going to cut right down along this edge. So I'm going to start from the corner. I'm going to cut along the corner. And again, I'm just doing this freehand nice and slowly. Slice the whole way through. Peel this piece up. And again, just another little touch of heat. I just want to get rid of that wrinkle that was there. And you can see now the material is back to its original form. It's not stretched. And it's going to hold this corner really, really nicely. I'm just going to bring it down in, bring it into place. And again, with my thumb, a good amount of pressure. I'm just tacking that into place. A little bit of a squeegee. That's tough to see, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right from my original cut in that corner down past the material underneath. And I'm going to cut through both layers. This is going to give us our double cut. Bring that the whole way through. I'm going to pull this top piece off. And what will happen is underneath here I've got this small piece of material. I just slowly want to pull that out. So with that out, what I can start to do is join the edge, the seams of our double cut. 
and you can see as I push that down it's now almost invisible and then with a back and forth side to side motion with my squeegee I'm essentially just gonna pull it down and almost weld the two together that's our double cut and that seam is almost seamless so next what we're gonna do is under this table we actually have a flat edge to get a nice clean look we're gonna wrap these pieces underneath and essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a bit of an overlap on both I'm just gonna give this a little tiny touch of heat just enough that I can get these wrinkles out and I'm gonna pull I'm not pulling with a ton of force just enough so that I can get this nice and flat underneath I can feel that with my finger that it's really flat and I'm going to take my knife, I'm going to trim along the inside edge here, nice and easy. Take this little tie away, and then I'm going to do the same on this side. Again, I just want to give this a little touch of heat, not a lot, just a little bit, just to get some of these wrinkles out, because it's going to make folding this underneath a lot easier. So again, I'm just going to pull this straight back, and as I come along, just with my thumb, I'm tacking this down into place. The less we compromise the adhesion on the back of the vinyl. So again, with my knife, I'm just going to come in on a 45, trim the whole way across. And I've got a nice even finish underneath. And again, just with my thumb, I want to make sure that everything is nice and smooth under the table. And that just finishes off this edge of this wrap.